Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and craziest side of tech available on the interwebs. I am your tech director, Ray McNeil. Coming up on the program today, SpaceX stacks their giant Starship rocket again to prep for a test flight. Hello Games resurrects Joe Danger as a free browser game. Happening in this week's What The, YouTubers said they destroyed over a 100 VHS tapes of an obscure movie to increase the value of their final copy. Yep, they then sold it on eBay. And of course, we'll wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update next. SpaceX has stacked its giant Starship rocket once again as a dramatic new video shows. Starship consists of a huge first stage booster called the Super Heavy and a 165 foot tall upper stage known as Starship, both of which are designed to be fully reusable. SpaceX is gearing up for the Starship program's first ever orbital test flight, which could lift off as soon as next month from the company's Starbase site in South Texas. The landmark mission will apparently involve a super heavy prototype called Booster 7 and the Ship 24 Starship vehicle. That duo recently got together, and the new video, which SpaceX posted on Twitter, captures the moment. The drone shot footage shows Mechazilla, the enormous launch tower at Starbase, using its chopstick arms to lift Ship 24 onto Booster 7, which was already sitting atop. Starbase's orbital launch mount. This isn't the first time that Booster 7 and Ship 24 have come together. Mechazilla stacked the duo on the orbital mount twice in October, for example. The lead-up to the Starship orbital launch has also involved considerable work with Booster 7 and Ship 24 on their own. SpaceX has conducted multiple static fires with each, lighting their engines while the vehicles remain anchored to the ground. Ship 24 has ignited all six of its Raptor engines simultaneously, while Booster 7 has lit up a maximum of 14 of its 33 Raptor engines. Booster 7 will blaze again before going orbital. SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk said recently that the company wants to perform a full 33-engine static fire on the vehicle before going airborne. Mechazilla will be a landing tower as well as a launch tower, if all goes according to plan. Musk has said that SpaceX eventually aims to catch returning heavy boosters with Mechazilla, using the structure's chopsticks to support the descending rockets beneath their steering grid fins. This strategy could significantly reduce the turnaround time between launches and landing for super heavy vehicles. SpaceX currently lands its first stages of its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets on ships at sea or at landing zones a short distance away from their launch pads. The boosters must then be hauled back to their launch sites. The recent stacking of Ship 24 and Booster 7 was part of a big day for SpaceX. SpaceX had four rockets on four pads and two Dragons on orbit as a sea RS-26 Dragon departed the space station with Crew-5 Dragon still attached to the orbiting lab. Falcon Heavy rolled out of the hangar, two Falcon 9s readied for launch, and Ship 24 was stacked onto Booster 7. The company tweeted all of this recently. And SpaceX is saying that they want to lift off of Falcon Heavy from Pad 39A at NASA Space Kennedy Center in Florida on a mission for the U.S. Space Force. Not much more is mentioned on that one, but of course we'll keep you updated with any new SpaceX news right here on your weekly tech update. Okay, now I'll admit that this one is for the more hardcore Star Trek fans in the room, but it is funny no matter who you are. In 2022, Playmates Toys returned to the Star Trek franchise with the release of their first wave of 5-inch Star Trek figures. Now, 
Well, the company has created a short stop-motion movie featuring figures from the first wave, along with guest star John Delancey as Q. Uh, what if Star Trek figures became self-aware? You, you can find out what happens in the short film from Playmates. Captain, I am reading zero life signs on the bridge. Extraordinary. It appears we have become action figures, Data. Uh, Captain, my legs aren't behaving. Number one. Stop messing about. What trickery is this? Trickery? Ha! Au contraire. Q! Turn us back immediately and leave. Leave? Now? Well, I, I don't know. I just got here. Captain, we are being boarded. Red alert. There he is. Gone! Data. Recommendation. Captain, it would seem that the best course of action would be to do nothing at all. Hmm, a logical analysis. That was quite unexpected. Indeed. Let's carry on then. Engage. The first wave of Playmates 5-inch Star Trek figures includes Picard, Data, Riker from Star Trek The Next Generation, Kirk, Spock, and Khan from Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, and Saru and Burnham from Star Trek Discovery. If you'd like to check out more details, they are all fully in stock at Amazon.com and uh, discounted for $12.99 each. Just short of a year after first demonstrating its autonomous hybrid electric cargo vertical takeoff and landing aircraft called the Chaparral, San Francisco Bay Area startup Elroy Air's order book, well, it just grew by more than $100 million. Elroy announced it signed an agreement with UK-based LCI, a leading aviation company and a subsidiary of the Libra Group for commitments to purchase up to 40 chaparrales. The deal pushes total orders for the aircraft to more than $2 billion, according to the company. Essentially, LCI, which currently owns about 150 helicopters, would would add the chaparral to its portfolio, offering them for lease while providing financing to clients, primarily humanitarian organizations, relieving them of large upfront cash layouts. That's according to Elroy Air's vice president of business development and strategy. It'll be a bit before LCI sees its first chaparrales, according to Elroy Air's CEO, who told Forbes.com we're going going to have systems in tests and flight tests this year and next year. We're going to be starting to operate systems with some customers next year and the year after, and then we're expecting to deliver to LCI subsequently in a few years. The Chaparral is designed to pick up a pod loaded with 300 to 500 pounds of cargo, fly it to a destination as far as 300 miles, and then drop it off, ready to pick up another preloaded pod. The pod awaiting pickup communicates with the drone via a set of radio frequency beacons, which assists the aircraft in triangulating the pod's position. The only humans involved are those packing and unpacking the pods. The chaparral does not require an airport for takeoff or landing. It's very cool. It features distributed electric propulsion. It has eight vertical lift rotors, but then four forward propellers for cruise flight, a high wing airframe configuration. Its airframe is fabricated using carbon composite materials. Now, while able to fly autonomously, the Chaparral can also be piloted remotely when necessary to comply with government regulations. The fact that uh, Chaparral doesn't require an airport or large area to take off and land makes it especially useful for transporting cargo in the kinds of otherwise inaccessible areas humanitarian organizations often serve. As further evidence of Elroy Air's dizzying pace of development, the company also announced recently that it's moving its flight testing facility a little over an hour northeast of its South San Francisco headquarters to Byron Airport airport in Byron, California. The airport is seeking to become a hub for advanced air mobility and unmanned systems development and testing. That's according to the CEO. He said Elroy's headquarters will remain in South San Francisco, 
along with the majority of the company's research and development design and finance team. 